Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Huya's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratio so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Huya is a video streaming service. It is the Twitch of China. The company's main focus is on video game live streaming, and it includes official broadcasts of esports competitions. Similar to Twitch, it has other live events such as cooking, anime, outdoor activities, etc. It has 180 million monthly active users compared to Twitch's 140 million. The company is headquartered in Guangzhou, China and was founded in 2014. It started trading in 2018 and can be found on the New York Stock Exchange, Deutsche Börse and London Stock Exchange. Huya is in other countries outside of China, but it's called Nemo TV. An article published by the Chinese government said many teenagers had become addicted to online gaming and it was having a negative impact on them. The article cited Tencent's usually popular game Honor of Kings, saying students were playing it for up to 8 hours a day. If the Chinese government is successful in reducing the number of hours spent playing online games, then that could hurt Huya's stock price. Douyu is a competitor of Huya. Both companies are very similar. It has 164 million monthly active users. Tencent owns 37% of Douyu and 47% of Huya. Douyu is listed on the Nasdaq with a market cap of $1.2 billion. Douyu and Huya control 80% of the Chinese video live streaming market. Tencent wanted to merge these companies together, but it was denied by China's market regulator. The regulator said the merger would violate antitrust laws. Antitrust pretty much means a monopoly. If these two companies merged, it would create a monopoly, which is illegal unless it is a government-controlled monopoly. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 2.5 billion market cap, the trading at $11 a share, and they have 236 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video, and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they do have positive free cash flow every year. It peaked in 2019 at 281 million. They don't have the free cash flow for the trailing 12 months, so use 2020 numbers. Sometimes non-US companies don't have all the information in their quarterly filings, but they do have all the information in their year-end reporting. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's a revenue minus expenses. And that was negative in 2018, but positive and growing after that. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grows a lot from 700 million to 1.7 billion. This is the company's income statement. All their financials are in Chinese yuan. I converted all the numbers to US dollars in my Excel spreadsheet. A simple way to convert these numbers to US dollars is just to divide by seven. The top line of the income statement is their revenue, which you can see has grown a lot from 4.7 billion to 11 billion. But look at their revenue back in 2016. It was only 800 million. Then it went up two and a half times to 2.2 billion, and then it doubled to 4.7 billion. It's just amazing growth for this company. Below is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. About 90% of their cost of revenue is from revenue sharing fees and content costs. These are expenses that are paid to broadcasters and talent agencies. Also, the expenses are content licensing and production costs. So it looks like they have to pay fees to the video game maker to use their video games on their platform. It's similar to the way Netflix has to pay licensing fees in order to show movies and TV programs on their platform. Then below that is their gross profit, which more than tripled from 2018 to the trailing 12 months. Then below that is operating expenses. Most of their operating expenses are marketing and research and development. Then below that is operating income which was barely positive in 2018, growing to over 700 million yuan in the trailing 12 months. That's over 100 million US dollars. So that's a pretty massive growth from barely being profitable to 100 million dollars of operating income. And they don't have any debt. So this 300 million dollars is the interest income they received on the cash on their balance sheet. Because companies usually don't just keep cash in a savings account. They invested in really safe investments like treasury bonds, overnight investments. They pay really low interest rates, but higher rates than a savings account would. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which looks really good, almost $900 million in the trailing 12 months. 
They did have negative 2 billion of net income in 2018. That's from this negative 2.3 billion in other income and expenses. So before the company IPO'd, they issued preferred convertible debt of 2.3 billion yuan. And then when the company IPO'd, that convertible debt converted to equity. So they were able to remove $2.3 billion of debt off their balance sheet, but they had to pass it through onto the income statement as a loss. So even though they reported negative $1.9 billion of net income, we'll see later they actually generated positive cash flow in 2018, because this is a non-cash item. When a company sells stock, it's selling a part of its business. So when it sells a piece of their business and they get cash for it, they don't owe anybody anything. So that's one of the main ways to get financing is to sell a part of your business. Another way to get financing is to issue debt. The problem with issuing debt is you have to pay the interest payments on your debt and then the principal payments. You have to pay it all back. The great thing about equity is you don't have to pay that money back. This was a big win for the company when they IPO'd because they removed $2.3 billion of debt off their balance sheet and converted it to equity. The only negative is to the shareholders. It dilutes the shareholders but there's really no negative for the company. The only slight negative is if the shareholders are upset that their shares are diluted. This is the company's statement of cash flows. They don't have the information for the trailing 12 months, but the trailing 12 months is the last three quarters of 2020 and the first quarter of 2021. So it should be pretty similar to 2020's information. And the company's been improving each quarter, so their numbers should be even better in the trailing 12 months. But we'll just use the information we have. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So you can see even though they reported a $2 billion loss in 2018, they actually generated over $700 million of cash flow because that loss was a non-cash item. Surprisingly, they have quite a bit in CapEx, over $400 million in 2020. The company says their capex is for the use of land rights, obtaining licenses, purchasing servers, as well as leasehold improvements. I thought their capex would be low because they don't really manufacture anything. They just need a bunch of computers, but apparently they need more infrastructure than I thought. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. So they have excess cash flow remaining after each year. 2019 was their best year, almost 1.9 billion of excess cash flow. But even in 2020, it was still pretty good, over 800 million. So after operating their business, paying all their expenses, they had 1.2 billion dollars left over. Then they invested 400 million back into their business and they had 800 million remaining. So they could pay a dividend, but they're not paying a dividend. They could buy back stock, but they're not buying back stock. So it just looks like the company is sitting on a lot of cash. The stock price has come down a lot, so people think, why don't they just buy back stock since it's at a great value? It makes sense to me, but we have to trust what the company's doing is correct for their shareholders. They may buy back stock when it comes down more, or they may have another plan in place with the cash. That's why we invest in companies, we give them our money, and we trust they're going to do the right thing with our money. If you don't trust what the company's doing with your money, I suggest just don't invest in them. This is the equity section of the company's balance sheet and they have 10 billion of equity. They raised 11 and billion from selling stock and they lost 1.7 billion from running their business. But if they didn't convert that debt to equity in 2018, they wouldn't have had this big loss. They would have positive retained earnings at this point. That's why net income can be a little deceiving. So you have to really understand the numbers. Let's look at their capital structure. They have 1.5 billion of equity, 12 million of debt. So they're pretty much all equity. They almost have no debt. And you can see they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet, $1.6 billion of cash. Their weighted average cost of capital is 8%, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 4.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $3.9 billion. We divide that by 236 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1648. They're trading at 1078, so they're trading at a 35% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street values a company at $17 a share, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued. Five analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $22. So they're saying it's even more undervalued than me and Simply Wall Street. So this is where the stock has been trading since it IPO'd. So in May 2018, the stock IPO'd at $12 a share. 
It closed the day at $16 a share, and then a month later on June 11th, it peaked at $46. So it had a really nice run up. And then when a stock usually has a really fast run up, people take in their profits and sell off, which is expected. So the stock was moving up and down, up and down. When the merger was announced with Douyu, the stock went way up. When the Chinese government blocked the merger, the stock came down. But then it came down even more when the Chinese government started interfering with companies like DD. They didn't want DD to IPO in the United States, but DD did anyway. The Chinese government has been interfering with electronics companies and education companies. So that's why a lot of people have been selling off their Chinese stocks. So this stock is trading below its IPO price for the first time. So people are saying, how low can it go? But it could go lower. It could go to seven or eight. It's hard to really tell. It's really surprising it got this low. It seemed like a great value at 15 or 20. Now it seems like an amazing value. And the stock isn't too volatile. It has a beta of 0.74. And the stock has gotten crushed in the past 52 weeks, down 55%, while the S&P is up 32%. The stock is currently trading at its 52-week low. Its 52-week high is 36, and it's well below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 3.5 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 236 million shares outstanding, one-third are on float and 7% of the shares are shorted. The short interest was over 30% at one point when the stock was trading higher. But as the stock price comes down, obviously the short percentage comes down. Because the low of the stock price, there's less money you can make on shorting it. So the stock is down a lot in the past year and past three years, while its industry and the market are both up. Analysts still think this company will grow. They're projecting their earnings to grow 47%, the revenue to grow 14%. In the past five years, their annual earnings are up 57%. That's an amazing growth. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, the starting price is $16 because that was the price at the end of the first day. It's not $12. But you'd be at $6,700 today. That's a 33% loss. After one month would have been your highest point. The $10,000 would have been worth about $28,000. The biggest shareholder is Tencent. That's the largest video game vendor in the world. That's why they have a lot of shares not on float, because no one can buy 10 cents shares. Joy has a social media platform in China, so they do a lot of work with this company. They own 16% of the stock, then Morgan Stanley, Bailey Gifford, and Capital Research. Let's look at their financial ratios. Their price multiples have improved a lot the past few years. It's improved in both directions, because for the PE ratio, the numerator is the market cap and the denominator is net income and their market cap has come down a lot while their net income has increased a lot. Both of those situations make for a really attractive P.E. ratio. If you looked at the P.E. a year ago or two years ago, it might have been 30 or 40. Now it's below 19. They also have a really good price to sales ratio of 1.5 and a good price to book of 1.7. And you can see they have hardly any intangible assets. Almost all their growth is done organically and they don't have any debt. It's really amazing how well this company's performing. They have a good return on the equity of 9%, and they have a really high current ratio and quick ratio because they don't really have any debt. They're all assets, so, so that's why their current ratio is so high. And they have a ton of cash on their balance sheet, 10.7 billion yuan. That's equivalent to 1.6 billion US dollars, and their market cap is 2.5 billion US dollars. So 63% of their market cap is in cash. So it's almost like a risk-free investment investing in this company with so much cash in that balance sheet. If this was a US-based company, their market cap would probably be $100 billion. They would be a really overvalued stock because they're growing so much and people would just pour into the stock. But since it's based in China, people are scared and not investing in the stock. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of eight companies in the same industry as Huya. And if Huya has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're pretty much better in every single ratio, except they have a low market cap and they don't pay a dividend. No one pays a dividend in this industry. It's good to look at ratios against similar companies or at least companies in the same industry because it gives you a better idea if the ratios are really good or not. And apparently they are really good. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 35% discount. Even though the stock is really undervalued, there's just no way to know when people will feel comfortable investing in Chinese stocks again. It's really dependent on the Chinese government. And I'm almost confident their stocks will go up, especially the really good companies. Maybe some of the weaker companies that don't make money will still struggle, but these really good stocks, 
like Baidu and Alibaba, they're so severely undervalued. One thing to consider when investing in this stock, as the lockdowns ease from coronavirus and people get out of their house more, there may be a good amount of people who were using Huya that were really bored that won't be using it anymore because they can go back to work and do social activities. But there's a really large population of people using Huya that are going to stay in their house regardless if there's coronavirus or not. They just feel more comfortable in their house playing video games. So I don't think there's too much risk for that, but it's just something to consider when investing in a company like this. I ranked their free cash flow as 5 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratio is 9 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.